Song of the Ravenborn. Corva prowled the jagged mountain crest, her obsidian feathers thrashing in the fierce winds of the stormy sky. A hybrid creature born from a warrior queen and a raven god in a time long past, she was a force to be reckoned with. Her mismatched eyes, one burning crimson and the other an abyss of darkness, scanned the darkened valley below with an instinctual sense of danger. She braced herself for battle, ready to unleash her fury upon any who dared to challenge her kingdom. Whispers had spread like wildfire, carried on the mournful winds that swept through the land. They spoke of a bloodthirsty warlord named Volcar, who left nothing but destruction in his wake. His army marched through villages, leaving smoldering ruins and shattered lives behind them. And with every village he decimated, the crimson tide of his reign stained the land deeper. Corva, a skilled warrior and protector of her people, knew it was her duty to stop Volcar. She was bound by the Raven's Law, blood for blood. As darkness descended upon the valley where Volcar's camp sprawled, Corva gracefully descended from above. Her wings, as dark as night, rustled gently in the wind. A scream pierced through the night, raw and desperate. Corva peered into one of the tents and saw Volcar dragging a young woman towards a ritual fire. Rage blazed within her raven heart. This was not honorable warfare but pure barbarity, and Corva would not allow it to continue. With a deafening shriek, Corva pounced from the shadows. Her talons tore through flesh, and her blade sang a symphony of vengeance. One by one, Volcar's men fell before her like wheat before a scythe, their screams drowned out by the song on Corva's lips. But Volcar, fueled by dark magic and consumed by rage, proved to be a formidable opponent. His axe crackled with energy from fallen souls and clashed against Corva's ebony blade with sparks flying like fiery tears. Volcar was strong and vicious, but Corva danced around him, a whirlwind of feathers and fury. In this storm of battle only one could emerge victorious. Clashes of metal and screams of agony filled the air as Volcar and Corva fought amid the camp engulfed in flames. The stench of burning flesh mixed with the coppery tang of blood. Volcar swung his massive axe with wild abandon, while Corva moved gracefully like a bird riding the wind, deflecting each blow. A sudden shift in the ground beneath her feet loosened stones, causing Corva to stumble. In that moment of vulnerability, Volcar saw an opportunity and thrust a knife into her back. The pain was unbearable, stealing her breath and sending her crashing to the ground. The hilt of the blade protruded from her spine and she reached out desperately, attempting to pull it out. As she lay on the ground, struggling for breath, Volcar loomed over her with a look of cruel triumph on his face. He sneered at her defiance and declared that death was the fate of those who dared to defy him. Something within Corva stirred. A surge of warmth coursed her body as feathers and shadows rose from the spilled blood around her. She felt herself transforming into something else entirely, a creature of pure vengeance with glowing eyes and wings that stretched out with a thunderous crack. With a scream that split the night, Corva embraced her new form, the Ravenborn. She was no longer a mere woman or a warrior, but an avenging force. She soared towards Volcar with deadly intent. Volcar's face contorted with fear as he stumbled back, his triumphant expression replaced by terror. With a guttural roar, Corva ascended, her body a monstrosity under the moonlight her voice a chilling caw. Swiftly she ripped the knife from her back, the wound healing instantly. Corva descended upon Volcar, her raven claws trained on his neck. He screamed, but his cries were drowned out by the haunting melody on Corva's lips. The melody, filled with sorrow and rage, echoed through the night, a blend of melodic caws and the eerie whispers of the shadows. Its ghostly splendor was accompanied by a choir of ravens, their voices joining in harmony with Corva's as she descended upon her foe. As she stood victorious over Volcar's lifeless body, the sun rose, casting a dim light on the gruesome scene. Corva perched atop a pile of burning remains, the air thick with the scent of death and destruction. As she basked in her victory, whispers reverberated in her mind, growing louder and more insistent urging her to fully embrace her role as a vessel for the Raven God's power. Despite the tempting darkness surrounding her, Corva still clung to a glimmer of humanity. 
She had not chosen to fight Volcar because of her god's demands. It was her conscience that drove her to seek vengeance for the innocent lives he had taken. And as she felt the raven god's hunger clawing at her soul, Corva was aware that her biggest threat was not from any external enemies, but from the internal battle within herself. With a gut-wrenching effort, Corva tore herself from the burning pyre, her screams echoing through the dawn. Her body transformed into that of a raven. The weight of her new form weighed heavy on her wings as she took flight in the sky. Below the valley lay in ruins, charred and smoldering from the god's wrath. Corva refused to dwell on the destruction. She had a mission, a desperate quest to break free from the raven god's control and reclaim her human form. Legend spoke of a hidden sanctuary, nestled within the treacherous eye of the world, where magic flowed freely and whispers of a rebellion against the gods persisted. The journey was treacherous and unforgiving, with icy winds and piercing blizzards. The gods' minions, monstrous shadows born from his cruelty, lurked at every turn, testing her determination. Time slipped away as Corva trudged forward the sun just a dim glimmer in the never-ending storm. Doubt gnawed at her mind, tempting her with promises of an easy end if she just gave in. But in the darkness, she found solace in memories of her human life, her mother's embrace, the bond with her lost sisters, and the laughter of a village long forgotten. The memories were delicate, like flames flickering in the grasp of a raven. But they gave her the determination to keep fighting not just for herself, but for all of humanity. She believed in a future where gods didn't rule through violence and fear. Corva's body trembled with exhaustion as she trudged through the dense forest, her feet sinking into the damp, loamy earth with each heavy step. The air was thick and humid, causing sweat to trickle down her back and cling to her skin. The trees towered above her like ancient giants, their gnarled branches reaching out like grasping fingers. She heard the rustle of unseen creatures in the underbrush and the distant call of birds. Her tired eyes strained to make out any signs of a path or clearing ahead in the dim light filtering through the dense canopy. But for now, all she could do was push on, her determination driving her forward through the unforgiving terrain, urging her on toward her ultimate goal, the eye of the world. In time, she found herself in a hidden valley, Bathed in an eerie twilight that emanated from a pulsating pool of silver in the center, ancient magic humming beneath its surface, beckoning her closer. As she reached out to touch the pool, a figure emerged from the shadows. It was Volcar, his body twisted and malformed by the raven god's dark magic, a grotesque mockery of the man he once was. You won't escape this, ravenborn, Volcar rasped, his voice a chorus of tormented souls. This valley, the power belongs to the god. Fear gripped Corva as the raven within her cowered, urging her to surrender to Volcar and his master. But she remembered the screams of the innocent lives lost, the remains of her loved ones reduced to ashes on funeral pyres, and the faint whispers of hope carried by the howling storm. With a defiant roar that echoed through the valley, Corva charged towards Volcar. Steel clashed against shadow as they fought for dominance. Her sword was no longer wielded in blind vengeance, but with a fierce determination to fight for her soul and carve out a future where mortals could reign without the interference of gods. Her armor bore down on her shoulders, heavy with the weight of responsibility and purpose. Each step she took toward her destiny was a battle cry against fate and the powers that sought to control her. This was no longer just a warrior's quest. It was a woman's journey to defy the whims of divine beings and forge her path towards freedom. The battle raged on, each side drawing strength from their unique source of power. Corva refused to back down, channeling the energy of the storm and tapping into ancient magic. She fought with all her might, unwilling to let darkness prevail over the light. In the dim, fading light of twilight, Corva's fierce battle cry rang out like a clarion call, her sword glinting as it sliced through the air with deadly precision. She charged forward, her movements fluid and swift, determined to take down Volcar with every ounce of strength in her body. The sound of metal colliding reverberated throughout the forest, and with a single decisive blow she drove her sword into his chest, piercing his heart. As Volcar dissolved into particles of dust, 
Corva stood before the shimmering silver pool, panting and trembling. She studied her reflection, a fusion of female and raven representing the inner battle she had just endured. As Corva extended her hand toward the water, she suddenly realized that the raven god had not only manipulated Volcar, but also intertwined its dark influence within herself. She felt the transformation taking place, but it was far from complete. The raven's insatiable hunger still lingered within her. This was the ultimate test, not the battle with Volcar, but the internal struggle that raged within. Determined, Corva plunged her hand into the pool. Magic surged against her skin, tempting her with promises of surrender and unparalleled power. She resisted the tempting whispers of the god, astute, refusing to fall for its deceptive tactics. Corva let out a piercing cry that reverberated through the earth itself, and then plunged her head with its dark feathers into the water below. Pain coursed every fiber of her being as the magic ripped apart the darkness within her. She fought against it, screaming and flailing as both woman and raven battled for control. After a final surge of energy, Corva emerged triumphant from the pool. Her humanity intact, she stood tall and proud, no longer under the influence of the raven god's false promises. Although her struggles were ongoing, she remained confident in her decision to turn down the god's offer of escape. Corva spread her wings and took flight, feeling the wind beneath her feathers. No longer controlled by darkness, she was one with the raven within her. A symbiotic partnership between woman and beast. The temptations and ghosts that once whispered in her ear were nothing more than faint echoes. Her mission was evident, to protect the delicate balance between humanity and the environment, and to show that standing up against divine expectations and choosing one's path can lead to a brighter future. The world was desperate for a savior, one who wouldn't surrender to the demands of deities, but one who would rebel against them. With every flap of her midnight black wings, Corva sang out a battle cry, a promise that she would not succumb to the darkness, but instead wield it as a weapon in her fight for a better world. As she vanished into the boundless expanse of sky, Corva's raven's cry continued to echo, a resounding anthem of unwavering determination and resilience. Fractured Echoes Emilia Thorne, a young and passionate artist, inherited a crumbling Italian villa that stood tall against the rolling hills. It was shrouded in whispers of tragedy, its walls steeped in dark secrets. Legend had it that within its decaying halls hung a cursed portrait, its veiled figure promising power at a gruesome price. Emilia, fueled by ambition and a thirst for inspiration, couldn't resist the pull towards the villa's mysteries. As she wandered through its corridors, she sensed the weight of history bearing down on her shoulders, but it was the portrait that drew her in like a moth to flame. Shrouded in swaths of crimson silk, it dominated the grand hall with an air of mystery and danger. Amelia felt a magnetic pull toward it, her fingers itching to tear away the veil and uncover the secrets it held. And one moonlit night, she succumbed to temptation, the silk yielding to her touch with a whispering rustle. Gasped breaths and flickering candlelight revealed a woman, breathtakingly beautiful with eyes like onyx pools. But there was something off about her, something that sent chills down Amelia's spine. It was her smile, wide and crimson-stained, that seemed to taunt Amelia from within the painting's frame. And as she stared into those haunting eyes, Amelia knew that she had uncovered something far beyond what she had bargained for. As Amelia peered closer at the portrait, she saw that the woman's eyes were not just shadows, but held an inhuman glow. The nameplate below read, Olivia Thorne, and beneath it, a chilling inscription. The blood of those who gaze upon me is my sustenance. Curiosity morphed into obsession as Amelia researched her ancestor's life, uncovering dark secrets of forbidden arts and a rumored pact with the shadows. It was said that Olivia Thorne was not simply a painter, but also a vampire, using the villa's guests to maintain her eternal youth and powers. And the portrait? It wasn't just a canvas, but a conduit for Olivia's spirit to feed. As Amelia delved deeper, she heard Olivia's whispers in her dreams, promising unimaginable beauty and power in exchange for a single sip of crimson. Repulsed at first, Amelia couldn't help but feel an unnerving pull toward the darkness. But hunger grew like a serpent inside her, 
hissing in agreement with Olivia's promises. One night, unable to resist any longer, Emilia pricked her finger and let a single drop of blood fall onto the image of Olivia's painted lips. In an instant, the portrait crackled with electricity, and Olivia's eyes flared bright red. Emilia's heart raced as she gazed at the full moon, feeling a surge of energy course through her veins. The world came alive in a new way, with every scent and sound heightened. But this newfound power came at a grisly cost, the insatiable hunger for blood. Each night, Amelia prowled the villa grounds, seeking out unsuspecting guests to quell her thirst. But with each feeding, fear and guilt consumed her, distorting her reflection into a demon-eyed fiend. In the portrait on the wall, Olivia's sinister smile seemed to widen. The more Amelia's humanity slipped away, Olivia continued to whisper temptations of greater power, of making the entire village a hunting ground. The artist and the vampire were intertwined now, two sides of the same dark coin dancing under the moonlight. And then one fateful night, a young couple wandered into their lair, unaware of the danger lurking within. The young couple, John and Elena, had been exploring the villa's grounds, drawn by its eerie beauty and the legends that whispered on the breeze. As they stepped into the grand hall, the painting caught their attention. John couldn't shake the feeling that there was something familiar about the woman's face, so hauntingly beautiful, yet twisted by an inhuman hunger. Elena studied the portrait uneasily, her intuition urging her to leave. As they hesitated, Amelia emerged from the shadows, a seductive smile playing on her lips. Her once vibrant features now leached of color, eyes glowing crimson as she regarded her prey. John's heart skipped a beat when he saw her resemblance to Olivia. Was it a family resemblance or something more sinister? As Amelia closed in on them, fangs bared, Elena grabbed a dagger from the sheath on her hip, slashing the painting, screaming for John to run. Olivia's image screamed in agony, her power momentarily severed. In their frenzied escape, the couple stumbled upon a hidden library brimming with tomes on vampirism. Dusty pages revealed a way to break the curse. The blood of a willing Thorn family member must be spilled upon the portrait's veiled figure during a lunar eclipse. Emilia pursued them relentlessly, her cries echoing through the corridors like the howls of a trapped beast. But tonight was destiny's dance, and the moon hung heavy in the sky like a bloody orb, a lunar eclipse at its zenith. John and Elena somehow ended back where they had started. They stood back to back, swords drawn as they faced the vampire, Amelia. The moon shone through the stained glass windows, casting an eerie red glow over the grand hall, illuminating the tattered portrait of the long-dead queen. Amelia's fangs glistened in the light as she crept closer, her eyes fixed on her prey. Glancing down, John's hand shook as he read the ancient family crest carved into the marble floor. It read, In blood we rise, in blood we fall. John's heart pounded in his chest as he met Elena's terrified gaze, for he knew what he must do. He nodded and she understood, for he wasn't just another vampire hunter, he was also a thorn, a descendant of the fierce bloodline known for its ties to the dark and undead. But tonight, he had not come to fulfill his supposed duty. His true purpose was to protect the lineage by offering himself as a sacrifice to save them all from extinction. In a final act of love, John thrust the glistening blade into his own heart, the cold steel piercing the flesh and bone. A crimson stream splattered across the intricate details of the canvas, each drop forming its own brushstroke, adding depth and emotion to the already haunting masterpiece. As his life ebbed away, John's blood seeped into every crevice and corner of the canvas, forever merging his essence with the art he so cherished. Olivia's ethereal form let out a blood-curdling scream as her image disintegrated. The once beautiful portrait blazed with an intense fire, reducing Olivia's likeness to nothing but ash. And with the destruction of the painting, the curse itself lifted and dissipated into the air. Amelia's body crumpled to the ground, her legs giving way from exhaustion. She gasped for breath, feeling the weight of humanity settle back into her bones. As the sun rose, its blinding rays brought with it a sense of hope and rebirth. John's selfless act had bestowed upon them the chance at redemption, a priceless gift that Amelia and Elena would never forget. Vowing to repair the villa and unravel the darkness Olivia had woven into its very foundation, the two women forged a bond. Together they embarked on a new journey, determined to restore the reputation of the Thorn family and transform it into a beacon of hope and radiance. Rising from the ruins of despair, 
grief and shadow. Sunken Valley. As the sun dipped below the horizon, its final rays cast a fiery glow over the sunken valley. Megan adjusted her helmet cam to capture the breathtaking scene, while Jax and Riley watched in awe. The trio stood on the edge of the treacherous pit that had captivated them since they were children, now fueling their popular YouTube series called Edge of Nowhere. With a mixture of both fear and excitement, they eagerly prepared to descend into the depths of the sinkhole. Their headlamps illuminated the darkness as they descended the rocky walls, their fingers gripping the unforgiving surface. Intricate murals adorned the stone walls, remnants of an ancient civilization. Even Megan, known for her thrill-seeking nature, couldn't shake off the feeling of unease that crept over her. As they explored further into the valley, Jax's voice echoed through the quiet as he stumbled upon a grouping of strange markings. Riley perceived the slight shift as the ground trembled beneath their feet. Despite the unnerving discovery, the allure of viral fame was too strong for the adventurous vloggers to resist, so they continued in search of more thrilling footage for their fans. Jax eagerly led the expedition deeper into the cavern. Megan followed closely behind, her steps faltering as she attempted to hide her fear. Riley, always focused through the lens of his camera, captured every moment of their descent into the unknown. As they ventured further, the ancient murals on the walls grew increasingly threatening, depicting an evil entity awakening and unleashing its wrath on all who dared to disturb its slumber. The once subtle tremors now rocked the ground like a beating drum, building to a deafening crescendo. A sudden crack sounded as the earth split wide open, releasing a murky fog that choked their every breath. A guttural groan echoed from within the fissure. Panic consumed the group as they rushed toward the distant speck of light at the other end of the valley. And then the creature appeared, a hideous mass of shadows. Its obsidian skin reflected the dim light, giving off an otherworldly brilliance. Its long limbs twisted and jerked, seemingly independent of one another, as it emerged from the divide in the ground. The creature's jaws were a menacing sight, lined with razor-sharp teeth. Terrified, Riley stumbled and fell. He hit the ground with a thud, his hand still clutching the camera as he raised it to his eye. Through the lens, he saw the monstrous figure approaching. His heart pounded with fear, not for his safety but for what he knew was about to happen. Megan and Jax frantically shoved past Riley, their hearts thundering as they scrambled for an escape that simply did not exist. Riley watched helplessly through the camera lens as the creature's jaws opened wide. With lightning speed, it lunged forward and snapped Megan into its grasp. Her screams pierced the silence as she struggled against its iron grip. Jax came to a sudden and horrifying stop, his eyes widening in terror as he witnessed the brutal attack on his closest friend. With each swing of its powerful limbs, the entity tore Megan's fragile body apart, her screams reverberating through the area until they were abruptly cut off with a sickening snap. With a careless flick, the creature tossed her lifeless body aside, leaving only shreds of torn flesh and fabric behind. Turning its bloodthirsty gaze to Jax, it bared its jagged teeth, extinguishing his existence with a swift swipe of its massive claws. The live broadcast captured the chaos and horror as it unfolded in the sunken valley. The camera shaking as it attempted to capture the entity, its barbaric screams piercing the cavern. Megan and Jax's sobs echoing off the valley walls as the creature ended their young lives, Riley's shaking hands fumbling for his camera, raising it in one brave and final act of defiance, determined to document their last moments. Suddenly, the screen went black, leaving darkness behind and a chilling tribute to the vloggers who had sought fame but found their demise. The valley was sealed off, but snippets of the footage went viral on the internet. A haunting tale whispered in the agonizing cries and traces of blood, forever immortalized in digital remembrance. It stood as a dire warning and grim reminder that there are lines that should never be crossed. Beyond those boundaries lies a world of unspeakable terrors, waiting to devour anyone foolish enough to pass.